Hi everyone, welcome to the Neat Prep YouTube channel. I'm Disha Agrawal, a third year MBBS student at Maulana Azad Medical College, New Delhi. I did NEET 2020 in NEET and I scored 683 out of 720 with an All India rank of 499. So this video, I would like to call it the A to Z of test solving for NEET. I prepared for two years in 11th and 12th and to be very honest, I neglected the tests in 11th and tha. neglect tha. And then I had to spend almost all of 12th trying to correct those errors. So in this video, I will be sharing my experience that I learned over the years and hopefully you will learn something that you can apply to your preparation to give it that extra boost. I'll be covering all sorts of stuff like why you should attempt tests, how you should attempt tests, when you should attempt tests and how you can analyze them. So stay tuned and I hope you will learn something from this video. So very often I'm asked why should I attempt a test? Matlab, wo teen ghante wo revise kar sakte hai, apne aap MCQ solve kar sakte hai. So why take the stress of solving a test anyway? My experience tells me that there are so many benefits. The first one is keep you get to solve questions in an exam-like environment. So we have to have the right accuracy, we have to have precision, and it generally makes us faster. Second, tests are very good for revision and retention. So in those three hours, you can revise so many things because you have to reproduce them during those three hours. So I feel it is a very efficient way of rapid revision. And the third one is that you get your ranks. So rank milne se kafi acha reality check mil jata hai ki is pe hume abhi aur kaam karna hai, is topic ko hume improve karna hai. So it is always good to know where you stand with respect to other aspirants. When should you solve a test? Now that is also something that I'm asked very frequently. And I think kafi depend karta hai ki aap abhi kaun se stage mein hai apni preparation ke. Are you in class 11, are you in class 12 or are you a dropper? So I have uh, an algorithm that I worked out for all of you. If you're in class 11, uh, you should solve one short test, like a 360 mark test, every two weeks. Uh, that will give you some practice and you should solve a 720 mark test once every month. So this is sufficient uh, when you're in 11. In 12th, we um, can two parts mein divide kar sakte. the first six months and then the time leading up to the boards. So first six months may do as you were doing in class 11. And in the time leading up to the boards, you can amplify the test solving. So I would suggest you do a short test every week and you do a 720 mark test every two weeks. Then if you're a dropper, uh, you should solve a short test every week because that helps you revise topics very rapidly and you should solve a 720 mark test every two weeks. Now, what about the time uh, when NEET is very close? So, that is also the time when we have stress so that we have to revise so much, 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 so how do we do it? So, I feel that um, in the two months preceding the exam, you should solve a full syllabus or a half syllabus test every two weeks. Then in the months preceding the exam, you should increase the frequency to one syllabus. And in the two weeks before the exam, you should solve one full syllabus test every day. Uh, this will make you faster and this will help you identify your errors. And I think it will be great practice before the actual exam. You will be completely prepared for it. Another question is how do I prepare and how do I attempt a test? Preparation, test ke liye karna, Again, it depends on how familiar you are with the topic. Uh, if you're sitting for a test for the first time, like of a given topic, I would suggest you should read all the materials that you have very thoroughly and you should practice MCQs from your modules, from your books, from your question banks, taki before the actual test, you at least have some practice. And then as the tests keep happening, you will become more comfortable with the topic. So over time, I would suggest to accumulate rapid revision materials. And before those subsequent tests, just revise through the rapid revision materials. And sometimes, I uh, what I did, if I gave a topic a lot of time, I would just sit for it without actually revising. So, so it will be like a check for me, how I remember and how I retain. Then one more thing, uh, one more thing that I have noticed is that people are scared of testing tests. Uh, I think the reason is that they feel if they'll score well, they'll be demotivated. Ho but I will say that it doesn't matter how much you've prepared. Uh, you have to sit for the test because after all, it'll help you realize where you need to work on and how you can improve. If you don't sit for a test, 
uh, you will never know what are your weaknesses and what all you have to study even more. So I think you should not skip a test regardless of your preparation. There are also a few general uh, things I used to keep in mind when I solved the paper. Uh, one was the order in which I solved it. So again, it's uh, completely dependent on how we do it. So you should do what works for you. Uh, what I used to do was I would start with biology, then I would solve chemistry, and after that I would solve physics. OMR, I was the end of mark karti thi because I just felt more comfortable that way. Ki paper solve ho gaya, uske baad OMR karungi. Um, I used to give 30 minutes to biology, uh, 30 to 40 to chemistry, and one hour to physics because I was like, I have to do numericals apne se carefully and make silly mistakes. Na ho. So, if I do this, so this was the first round of test solving, and uske baad I had enough time for revision, like going back to the questions which I left initially, and to fill the OMR. Um, so, you may not follow this method, but a few things you should keep in mind. Ki, uh, you should have enough time left for OMR marking. Ki OMR is something that you have to fill very carefully because if the OMR is gone, then the entire test goes to waste. Like you just lost marks unnecessarily. Secondly, uh, leave the questions that you have no idea about. There is no point sitting and thinking that the answer of the question is what is the answer if we don't have any idea about the question. I was going to get a little angry if I had a 50-50 scene. Uh, if I am confused between all the options, I would suggest just leave it and move on. If you still have an idea that in two options you can answer ho sakta hai, then I guess you can you know, take whichever one you feel is the right answer. So I actually had an algorithm for my post-test analysis to see ki mujhe konse -konse topics fir se hai. So I would solve a test, I would identify that I had a mistake I would read those topics again from the NCRT or from my class notes. For, the, for biology, for inorganic chemistry, for organic chemistry, you should definitely read the NCRT again. For physics and for physical chemistry, you can still refer to your class notes and your modules. The most important thing is that you should solve at least 50 to 100 MCQs of that topic again. Uh, you can use books, you can use modules, you can use a question bank. The point is that after all the questions, you should sit in the mind of your mind that this is the concept. Then you can also add stuff to your formula sheets, you can add stuff to your revision notes, add stuff to your mistakes notebook, and you should read all of that again before the next test. And you keep repeating it, so uh, that by the end you have covered as many of your weaknesses as possible. I feel that the test solve karne se zyada important is to do analysis se karna. After all, that is what will tell you where you've done improve, right? So, uh, of course, you should check your score, you should check your rank. Some people are scared of opening their results. Bhi kholne se. Don't be one of those. Uh, make sure you're up to date with your progress and you're tracking your progress. So, after you have checked your score, after you've corrected your paper, you should see where you made mistakes. Right, so there are two categories of mistakes, uh, the way I think of it. One uh, is the category that you could have avoided, right? Things like calculation errors, question galat pad liya, randomly OMR humari galat mark hui. So unke liye the only thing you can do uh, is be more careful the next time. Matlab, ek baat pata chal ki meri tendency hai aise mistakes karne ki. So I will be 10 times more careful the next time ki mujhe ye mistakes nahi karni hai. Then there are, uh, then there is the other category, the mistakes that you could not have avoided in that particular test. So in that category, I would put things like I forgot the fact, I did not read the concept, I had no idea what the question was trying to ask. So for those, uh, I would suggest that you mark the topic. That this topic was my fault. You go back, you read it, uh, you solve more MCQs based on that topic, you maybe even go to your faculty and you help you and you ask them to clarify your doubts and you put together your rapid revision materials, you add things to your take notebooks, you make your formula sheets, you make notes so that the next time you're faced with a question from the same topic, you're able to answer.